Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss a very important property with respect to time travel feature in Snowflake and that is nothing but retention time or retention period, okay. So before going ahead with this particular discussion, I will request you to first explore the time travel feature if you are not aware of that. Already in my previous video, I have explained about time travel feature in detail. The links I'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section, you can check that. Okay, that you can treat as prerequisite for understanding this particular discussion. Okay, so what is retention time? In simple words, retention time or retention period is the time that we can travel back to the past in Snowflake, okay. So as you know, that using time travel, we can go back to past. Now, how much we can go back in past? That is basically controlled using retention time, okay. Like if I just tell you some figure, then for standard edition, okay, you can do time travel maximum up to one day or 24 hours, okay. For enterprise edition, maximum you can do time travel up to 90 days, okay. For business critical account, you can do time travel maximum up to 90 days. So that means what? That means maximum you can go in the past up to 90 days and you can query the table with respect to the state what it was having maximum up to past 90 days. Okay. But it does not mean that for all the tables, I need to go back to past up to 90 days, right? Then how much I can go back to past? That is basically controlled by this retention time okay this particular property plays the vital role in time travel that how much time i can go back okay so like for example if for any snowflake object if the retention time or retention period is one day that means i can go back up to 24 hours maximum okay so in simple words i can say suppose currently it is 8 38 pm and i am having a table for which retention period is one day so if i drop the table now up to tomorrow 8 38 pm 59 second i can execute undrop command and i i can get back the table but after 8 39 pm i cannot okay that means retention time is nothing but controlling how much time i can go back to past as simple as that okay so here let me show you one demo so like here I am dropping a database if exist. Okay. So here let me just make a semicolon here and now execute. So it does not exist. Now here I will create the database. And here what I am doing, I am creating a table called hello world and I am taking some data from an already existing snowflake table. Okay. And if I do select star, here you will see the data. So here this is how I created one particular permanent table in Snowflake. Now, how can I know that up to what time I can go back in past for this particular table? That is what is the maximum limit for time travel. How can I know? That I can basically explore using this kind of comment. So tables like here, this is the table name, then in clause, then database name, and then schema name. Okay. So if I execute this particular code, here I will be getting some information. If I scroll little bit right, here I will be getting retention time which is basically one day. So that means for this particular table, I can go back to past up to 24 hours or one day and I can query the past state. Okay, not more than that, right? Very simple, I hope you got it. So like for example, if I drop the table now, here the table is dropped. If I do select start, I don't have the table. So here you can see that it is showing that the table does not exist or not, not authorized. So I can execute undrop command. The reason is very simple. Because for this particular table, the retention period was set to 1. So within 24 hours, I can do undrop. So I am doing that. And now if I do select start, here I can again query the same table. Okay. Now suppose you want to change the retention period of the table. So that time you can execute this kind of command. Alter table, the database name, schema name, and then table name set. Data retention time in days equal to 0. So suppose I am making the retention time to 0. That means... For this particular table, the time travel feature will not be applied, okay. So now if I drop this particular table, here you can see if I do select start, currently I cannot access and you might think that I can do undrop command, but if I try to do, here undrop command will not work. Why? Because undrop command is nothing but related to time travel feature only and here I am mentioning retention time as zero. That means I cannot do time travel for this particular permanent table, okay. 
So like for example, if I do select star after executing undrop, obviously I will not able to do because undrop itself I was not able to, right? So by default retention time is one day. Now you can configure the retention time if you are creating some table, that is also fine. Like here I can create the table hello world one like this way. Just I need to mention the data retention time in days. Okay. So here currently I am using enterprise edition. So as you know that in enterprise edition maximum time travel can be done for 90 days. Okay. So here within 90 days I can put any value. So here data retention time in days I can put 45. Okay. And I can run this one. Now if I do show tables like the table name in this particular database in this schema. Here I will see that if I scroll a little bit right here retention time is 45 days okay that means up to 45 days in past i can go and i can use the time travel feature as simple as that okay so one thing i hope it is clear to you that retention time basically control the complete time travel feature in snowflake okay and that we can configure if it is existing object then we can execute alter command to change the retention time and if we are creating new table then using this particular property we can set the retention time for the table okay now obviously you might think this way that if i can travel back always maximum up to 90 days then why not configuring retention time in days up to 90 for maximum safety that question might be coming in your mind okay and the answer is very simple how snowflake is doing time travel every time whenever we are doing some insert update delete etc snowflake basically take that particular snapshot for that particular timestamp and keep a copy of the data so that in future if you are doing time travel to query the past data it can use that particular copy and serve you the required state okay so just think like this way suppose you have configured the retention time as 90 that means up to maximum 90 days you can do time travel and in your table in a very rapid speed insert update delete etc happening so what will happen in the back end multiple copies will be created okay so it might happen that your actual table is having only 2 gb of data but just to maintain the time travel for your 2 gb of data it is taking 90 gb of space it might happen because rapid insert update delete whenever it is happening that different state it is capturing in different different place okay so that also we need to think while mentioning the retention time okay and how much space is used for time travel handle that you can basically query from one particular view in account admin okay so if you go to account admin role here you are having account usage and there you are having a view called table storage matrix okay let me show you that so here you can see table storage matrix here some information you will be getting that how much space it is taking for time travel how much actually it is consuming for actual storage those informations will be available here okay but there is one thing that there might be one to two hours delay in updating the storage related statistics in this particular table so now if you are doing some changes and you are expecting time travel then immediately you might not able to see the information reflected in this particular view it might take one to two hours okay so like here i can query this particular table select star from snowflake dot account usage dot table storage matrix and if i go a little bit right here you will see this particular column time travel bytes okay that is how much bytes are used for time travel data maintenance okay so if i just go below here here you can see that here is some table the table name is snowflake refresher so for this particular table this state might be changed in past so here you can see that 7680 bytes are basically used for time travel but actually the table has only this much byte okay so different different states it is storing using in using time travel so that's why these time travel bytes are more than the actual bytes okay if you want to get the idea in better way you can convert these bytes into gigabytes okay so bytes to kilobytes then kilobytes to megabytes megabytes to gigabytes so i am dividing the time travel bytes by 1024 three times okay and that way i will be getting the time travel storage used actual storage used also from bytes i am converting to gigabytes okay and then here i am ordering just for a better visualization so if i just execute this kind of query here i will be getting the summary like here you can see that here for this particular table some amount of gigabytes are used 
for time travel okay so like this way you can inspect but as i have told you that you might be having one to two hours delay so just keep that also in mind so with this i hope the retention time concept is clear to you and if you want to know more about the retention period this particular link you can explore i will be sharing this particular link in the description box okay here you will get much more information about data retention period okay from snowflake documentation right so this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you